With the launch of the brand new Shockbike control panel, even though it's designed to be user friendly, there might still be a few features that seem a bit tricky at first. In this video, we'll break down the basics of the new and updated features, making it just that bit easier for you to confidently manage your server. The first step in managing your game server is setting it up for the first time. To do so, you'll want to check your emails. When your server gets activated, you'll receive an email from us with a link to your control panel. When you've clicked it, you should see a screen similar to this. Simply press start. Now the first thing you'll need to do is select which server environment you want your server to run on. This will vary depending on what game you're running, in this example I'll be setting up a paper Minecraft server, meaning it can support plugins. Then you'll need to select which version of the game you want your server to be. I'll just be selecting the latest version for this example. When you're happy with your server type, click continue. Next, you'll be able to adjust a few basic settings and invite friends to your control panel if needed. Once again, adjust these settings to your liking and press continue once more. Finally, review your server info and press finish. Now when you finish setting up your server, you'll be presented with your server overview screen. This will have a lot of easy access info and functions on it. Firstly, you'll be able to see your server details here, allowing you to actually connect with the IP address you see listed in this area. Next, there's a console section, which is a simplified version of the console tab you may have noticed at the top. From the overview page, you can also quickly run any tasks you may set up later, get information about which instance is currently on your server, learn info about this later, as well as see your current server usage and a list of all online players. The console tab is the same as what you'll see on your overview tab, however it has a couple of extra functions, namely the ability to filter out errors, warnings and general info. The server console is where you'll be sending commands, amongst other things, to your server. This and the overview page will be the pages you'll likely interact with the most in general day-to-day -day usage. Next up, the files tab. Fairly self-explanatory, but this tab will allow you to interact with your server's files. It's built in a way that should feel familiar, making it a lot easier to get a hang of. If you have the files you'd like to upload, you can simply drag and drop them into the window. If you'd like to download them, click the checkbox next to the file name and click the download button at the bottom of the page. You'll also notice that all text-based files are editable from here. However, some of them are important and regularly accessed files will be available from the config tab. Now heading over to this tab, you should see a couple of files here. The aim of this tab is to make configuring the server slightly easier. Looking at the server properties file for example, you should see descriptions of what each option does, and options to easily change and adjust the settings. I should note, if you do make any changes here, make sure to restart your server afterwards to make the changes take effect. Next up is the mod pack or plugin tab. Depending on your server type, you should either see a mod packs or plugin tab. Some games may not have this, if not you can skip to the timestamp on the screen now. So, with the mod packs tab, you'll either have the option to install the mod pack or create a new instance. When you select one of these options, you'll be asked to select a version. Go ahead and do so and simply click install. For plugins on the other hand, simply search the plugin or plugins you'd like to install, click install and when you've done so, restart the server so they can be applied. Now throughout this video, I've been mentioning instances, but what exactly are they? Well in the simplest terms, instances essentially let you swap your entire server files whenever you'd like, allowing you to have multiple different server setups on the same server. The setup process for a new instance is essentially the same as the process for first setting up your server. When you have multiple instances, you can simply switch between them by going to the instances tab on the left and clicking the switch button next to the instance you want to be active. Next up is the tasks tab. On this page you'll be able to set up and schedule frequent server events such as restarts, regular commands and anything else you can think of really. For a detailed guide on how to set tasks up, click the top right of your screen now. Finally we have the support tab. If your server runs into any issues, you can easily contact our team from within your service control panel. Simply hit the support tab and fill out the details regarding your problem and a member of our team will get back to you as soon as they can. Now, of course this isn't all the features within the new Shockbite control panel, however anything not covered in this video will likely receive its own video in the future and a more detailed guide for anything covered here will also be uploaded, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future guides. Thanks for watching.